What do you think of when you think of Memorial Day? The beginning of summer vacation? Barbecues in the backyard? Family gatherings? I know for my Memorial Day was the marching of the band down the main street of Beardsley, where I grew up, with the legion in front carrying the flags, and then we would go to the city park. And the roll call would be read of those who had died in service to the country or had recently died that had served. Now, in most churches, Memorial Day isn't seen as a, a holy day or as like Christmas or Easter or Pentecost, but it's a day that I think it's important that we as Christians remember and that we come together to think about. The word itself, Memorial Day, asks us to remember. Now, the ability to remember is a, a wonderful gift God has given us. In a flash, because of our memory, we can be a child again. We can be skipping rocks across a pond or walking in the meadow or the pasture. Through our memories, we get to fall in love again. We get to remember the first time we met the love of our lives. We get to get married again in our memories and enjoy the birth of our children. All this is possible because of the gift of memory. Some of our memories are happy, and of course there are some memories that are sad. And that when we think about them, it may even bring a tear. But one thing is for certain. Memories are very critical. If we couldn't remember that a red light means stop, we could find ourselves in a lot of trouble. And if we weren't able to remember what day it was, for example, your wedding anniversary or your wife's or husband's birthday, you'd be in big trouble. So memories and remembering are very important. This special day that we will celebrate tomorrow Memorial Day is a way to help us remember to ensure that we do not forget those that have sacrificed so much for us. Memorial Day started near the end of the Civil War, and within a few years, the practice of placing flowers on military graves had spread throughout the North and the South, and was called by almost everyone Decoration Day. I know my grandmother still referred to it as Decoration Day. After World War I, it became a national holiday dedicated to remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms that we get to enjoy. And it is also a day upon which we remember not only those who have died that were in the military, but we go to the gravesides of our loved ones our parents or grandparents or children that have gone on before us. Let us as a people of God have a moment of prayer as we remember for, before the Lord God all those who have lived and died in service to God, country, and family. Remembering that through their dedication and service and God's provision, we have many of the freedoms and blessings that we have today. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for today, a day that we have set apart to remember. We thank you, Lord, for all of the people who have sacrificed so much for us, for those who have fought and died to help bring us our freedom, even the freedom that we have to gather together today in your house for worship. We also remember all of our loved ones, Lord, that are no longer are with us, but have been part of our earthly journey and have contributed to who we are today. But most of all, Lord, we thank you and remember your ultimate sacrifice that paid the ransom for our lives, that brings us complete hope and confidence in our eternity with you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. On Memorial Day, we do decorate the resting places of our loved ones with flowers, gravestones, trinkets, 
so as to not forget them and to remember our love and to honor them. God, in his love for us, also gives us reminders of the promises he's made to us in his word, the Bible, of his never-ending love and provision, that he will truly never leave us nor forsake us, and he reminds us to keep our eyes focused on him and open our hearts and accept and receive all that he has provided. There are special days and times and symbols in the Bible designed to help us remember and to highlight God's promises, to remind us he's here. For instance, after God destroyed the earth and the flood, he said to Noah, I establish my covenant with you. Never again will I destroy the earth by waters of a flood. And then God said, I have placed a rainbow in the sky to remind you of my ever-present love and protection and provision. So every time we see a rainbow, we can be reminded of our Father God's love. Remember. God also has given us a day each week that we have set aside to worship him, to come. Third commandment, remember the Sabbath day. Remember and keep it holy. The third commandment was put in place by God himself as a reminder for us to rest in him and to remember our dependence on him. Remember the Sabbath day. The explanation in Luther's small catechism, what does this mean? We are to fear and love God so that we do not despise his word or the preaching of it, but hold it sacred and gladly hear it and learn it. Remember God. I pray that we as a people will recognize that whenever we come together, we have come to meet a holy and righteous God to remember what he has done for us and to rededicate our lives to him. Another great example of something that God has implemented to help us remember is the Feast of Passover. What are people remembering at this time? It's the saving hand of God and the hearing of God's, God's hearing their cry for mercy to be free. You know the history behind it. People of Israel had been in captivity in Egypt for over 400 years, and then God sent Moses to set the people free. God sent nine plagues upon the Egyptians to try to entice Pharaoh to let his people go. But Pharaoh continued to refuse. And finally, Moses tells the Pharaoh, this is what the Lord God says. About midnight, the angel of death will go throughout Egypt. Every firstborn in Egypt will die. The tenth and final plague. But the Israelites would be spared if they would put lamb's blood on their door frames. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. When I see the blood, I will pass over. No destruction will come to your house. And as they placed the blood on the doorposts, what does that make? A cross. It becomes a foreshadowing that through the precious Lamb of God, we too would be saved through the sacrifice on the cross of Jesus. After the death of the firstborn in Egypt, the Pharaoh and all the Egyptians urged the people to leave, to get out of the country. So after 400 years, they were free. And God said, this is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you will celebrate it as a festival for, to the Lord a lasting ordinance, celebrating God's deliverance the day the angel of death passed over Israel and Israel was freed by the hand of God. A meal of remembrance. 
Over 3,500 years have passed since that day, and every year faithful Jews still come together to celebrate Passover. And it's important that we as Christians also remember what God completed in the Passover. His hand of guidance and protection and his ear attentive to his children. As they left Egypt, the Lord God then departed the Red Sea. This was only the first time that God parted the waters. The second time came as the Israelites were coming to the Jordan River and they were going to need to enter into the promised land, but the Jordan was at flood stage. This is in the book of Joshua 4, 6 through 7. God parted the waters of the Jordan River so that the people could walk safely into the promised land. As Joshua led the people across the river, they took the Ark of the Covenant, and when they reached the edge of the river, the water started flowing back. And then they walked into the middle of the Jordan River with the Ark of the Covenant, and the people all crossed safely. After 40 years of wandering in the desert, they had reached their destination, the promised land. And Joshua said to 12 men, a representative of each of the 12 tribes of Israel, I want you to take a big rock from the center and carry it to the other side of the riverbank and place it there and put one on top of the other so that there would be a stack of 12 stones to be a memorial to all generations to come so that when the children see the pile of stones and they ask, what is this? That for all generations, people would know that it was the hand of God that had delivered them safely, that God had kept his promise to always be with them and to never leave them. Kate and I, whenever we go on vacation, we too like to build these memorials. The two that are showing here, one of them is up the uh, Little Pigeon River close to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and the other one is off the Cincinnati River, which is uh, close to Florence, Kentucky. And while we were building them, people would see us gathering stones and trying to stack them on top of each other. And it gave us an amazing opportunity to witness. They'd say, what are you doing? And then we would say, well, we're just making a memorial to God, just like they did when he parted the water. And they said, the Red Sea? No, in Joshua. It seems like many of us had missed that part of our confirmation and, and Sunday school, but that God had parted the waters a second time. So it gave us a chance to talk to them about the provision of God and the blessings from God, and that when we would build it, we also took time to honor God and to thank him for the gift of our family and for our children and for all of the many blessings that we have received. And we take it as an opportunity to remember God. And finally, there is another meal of remembrance that we as Christians have been given. It's what we just celebrated, the Lord's Supper. It was to be an evening of remembering when Jesus was gathering with his disciples, celebrating Passover, but now it would have even a more eternal meaning to us as Christians. For Jesus, as I said in the as we were celebrating communion, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, take and eat, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. And then in the same manner, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it to them, saying, take and drink. This cup represents the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. 
No longer were the ingredients of the Passover simply a reminder of their release from Egypt. It now was to be a reminder to all of us. It's our release from sin. That's why Jesus said, never forget what I have done for you. Jesus became our Passover lamb. He willingly gave up his life and paid the price so that we could be redeemed. By his dying on the cross and suffering, we have forgiveness. We have hope. We have freedom. And we are given eternal life. Because of Jesus, we have much to remember. Whatever you do, don't forget how much it cost to save you. Don't forget the price that has been paid and is being paid so that we can live in freedom and enjoy the blessings that God has given to us. Never forget. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we do acknowledge your ever presence in our lives. We thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit to live within us, to be that guiding, protecting, and loving presence within us. Lord, keep us strong as we have our journey here on earth. Keep us focused and connected to you. And Lord, help us to be part of leaving to the next generation a place even better than we received by following you and serving you and protecting the freedoms we have been given. This we pray in your gracious, loving name. Amen and amen.